Okay, I'm going to jump to putting the um, BL controllers on the on the power distribution ring, only because it's probably the most, one of the more tedious items to do, and I just want to get it done. <laughs> anyway, power distribution ring. I think I probably have some earlier video on this, but um, basically the quick and easy things to look at are. You want to look at your, your DNC here. That's not DC for power. That is DNC for your I2C bus. Um, you'll see on the flight controller there's a DNC on it also. It connects to this. You have a plus over here and then a minus on the other side. That's for power to your flight controller. Uh, you get the same thing over here. There's a plus and a minus also that can be used for other, other devices. Um, over here you've got your main battery connector. Um, plus on this side, it's a rather large, rather large connector um, with a plus on this side and a minus on this side. Uh, so, you, but you want to be very careful when you solder this not to bridge any solder over over the edge because it's really th pretty thin, and you can easily uh, get a glob of solder over it, and it'll definitely arc when you when you turn on your battery for the first time. If you look on here, there's also these little white lines. Um, you need to put uh, jumpers in all of these white lines all the way around the board when you're when you're done, either after you get the BL controllers on or at some point in the instructions. Um, that adds the DNC bus. That that way you can the BL controllers can talk to the flight controller. Um, and that's really about it. You'll see something a little different on on my ring. I have added the optional. Um, transistor and resistor on here on the ends I can barely see it um, but right right here there's a transistor and then a little resistor next to it um, they're pretty inexpensive items you can pick them up you know at, at um, electronic stores or online um, there's a couple here there's three sets of them on the ring here um, and I've added these so I can later control my LEDs with more power so I can put up to an amp through these um, where on the other ones um, I could only w running the switches off the flight controller on the um, the S2 you can only um, you can only control about um, six of the LEDs um, that come in the kit uh, one, one section um, and with these, I can I have pretty much unlimited. I could cover the whole arms and LEDs, and I'm sure it'd be fine up to an amp each. Um, of course, it does drain your battery power more. But hey, you know we can turn them on and off with the switches this way. Um, and I could use a servo switch for the other ones um, if I want to use uh, the SV switch. What is it one and five? Um, to run two of these and then the other one I could use a servo switch or something like that. But anyway, what I really want to show you is how to connect the BL controllers. One thing to look at too on here is um, the, the numbering. Um, always go by the number um, for your BL controllers. If you look at the manual, the manual may show you something different. On the older boards, the one started on this side of the front. You see, here's your arrow right here. So that's your front and, and your main um, front arm, your red arm will go right between here and on this one the the uh, number one is on this side and the number two is on this side. If you look at, I have an older board here that's kind of tore apart, but if you look on the older boards um, one is on the other side. One is here and six is here. So again on the new boards on the new boards you can see one is on Place, same place as six is on. Um, so when you're looking at the manual, and, and it's rather confusing because I've I even saw the manual where it says odd and even to set them up a certain way. Um, really go by go by the numbers that are printed on the on the on the power distribution ring. I think from now on you'll see them all this new style. But when you look at the manuals, the manuals haven't been updated, so you'll see that these are confusing. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Um, but we're going to just talk about the newer boards because that's what we're going to build today. Um, and so we're, I'm going to start with, with number two only because I've already bent a cap 
for, for the second position. Um, when you bend the caps for the second position, they're basically just bend them over straight. Um, give yourself a little bit of a little bit of space off the bottom of the cap so the bottom of the cap doesn't touch the the, the board. Um, so you want to you want to you want to bend them with a you know eighth of an inch or so, sixteenth of an inch space left here uh, when you bend them. And they will. Um, we're gonna do number two. And also, if you notice right here where it says um, two, and then right underneath in real small letters it says two and three. Um, those are the jumpers that you put on the board. Um, so on the BL controller, I'll do it a little, in a little bit. But on the BL controller, um, you have addressing. Um, let's see if it'll focus. Um, you have addressing. See this one, two, three. Um, that allows you to um, set the set the jumper. So. Basically, I just put a glob of solder between two and three to make this BL number two, um, and that's what we're going to work on. If BL number one, you don't have, you don't have any jumpers, but BL two, uh, you do have a jumper. So what we're going to start with two, and we're going to basically you use the um, the cap to actually hold the, the BL controller onto the board. Um, and then also when you cut the ends of these you save them um, because you use them to hold the to hold it on the, to the other end uh, to the DNC connectors um, you make little jumpers out of them so the way this goes um, one thing to remember is you always want the C, B, and A or A, B, and C up on the board um, that's for your motor wires um, so you know you're looking at it right if you can see this and basically it's A, B, and C um, right here on the edge of the board. That's where you wire up your motor. And um, sorry for the long pause. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's where you wire up your motor. This is going to go in the number two position. Um, if you look, there are holes on the like I said, you got to have the A and B up, and then uh, you'll see these these small holes on the edge of the board. One says plus, and the other one that's not marked minus is the minus um, for the cap. You'll see on the ring there's a plus and a minus marked right here on the ring, and then there's a like I said there's a plus on the board right there. Um, so what you do is you with your bent capacitor this way, make sure that the negative sign goes into the right side, the correct side. That is marked negative. You put it down into the on flat, so you want this flush. Um, you also want to make sure that it's parallel with the board, um, so that's pretty straight this direction. Um, so what you do is is what eventually what happens is you end up bending this up and getting it into place right here. So you want to feed it through the proper sides underneath. The board so you kind of have something like this so you kind of have made a sandwich now um, so you got the board and you got it through now you can just gently start bending the board back uh, but a couple things to keep in mind is when you start bending this you really should use a pair of needle nose first of all not so much on pressure on the board and you have to leave yourself enough room so that it so that it clears the board so that when you when you start bending it out that it actually can clear the board at, on the edge. If, if you didn't leave enough space, the board's not going to fit um, up into it properly and you end up, and you end up with a, a bent board. But what you want to do is you just kind of easily, gently bend that up and then make sure the board can still fit um, tightly into the, 
position. So basically that's it. So you bend it up like that so that it is then flush all the way around this edge right here. See how it's flush? 